When I was 10 years old in 1946, I became fascinated with clocks. My father would clean a grandfather clock mechanism for a friend or relative, taking it completely apart with the components carefully placed in jam jars. It was a source of wonder to small boy me when the pendulum was set in motion and the whole mechanism came alive as a ticking, breathing, striking being. Magic, pure magic. Academics tell me that the most important invention for humanity was the wheel. I disagree. The invention that changed the world most is the clock. The wheel is the servant of humankind, but clocks control us and make us servants to the clock. I studied astro navigation with the Royal Yachting Association and became a yacht master ocean instructor. I learned that John Harrison made the first seagoing clocks and I went to Greenwich to see these wonderful mechanisms. To start any collection, you need three things, the time, the money, and the inclination. And you're lucky if you just have two. It's very rarely that you have all three. I bought my first clock in 1977, a month going long case by John Taylor of Ormskirk made over 300 years ago. Well, I couldn't let my namesake down, could I? <laughs> this was the start of my collection. It would be a dozen or more years before I was seduced by other clocks and serious collecting had to wait until I retired from my day job, Strix, the company that I had started in 1981 to exploit my kettle control inventions. As an inventor, I love finding out about the clockmakers of 400 years ago and studying how they changed their mechanisms. Some were innovators, some followed along, but they were all practical craftsmen and each change was only made to make them better return on their living, on their labors. Almost without me noticing, I had assembled a most interesting collection of early English clocks. I was approached by the Antiquarian Horological Society to put on an exhibition of mostly my clocks in the Museum of the History of Science in Oxford on the 29th of March, 2003. I taught myself to use a view camera and with the help of my son, Neil, tried to take images of the exhibits in a new and innovative way. I also insisted that each and every exhibit were running to me a stopped long case is a coffin with a dead, decaying clockmaker incarcerated inside. Many other exhibitions have followed, as few people have been able to travel to the Isle of Man to see the collection in my home. I started to wonder what to do for the future. How could I reach a new audience in general and inspire a young audience in particular? I'd like to claim a eureka moment when I leapt from my bath with the idea for an internet clock museum open to all, showing how clocks worked. The idea just came about slowly. I have enjoyed building up my collection, but now is also the time to let the other individual collectors have their chance and the pleasure to look after one or more of these wonderful working artifacts for a few years. Over the last eight years, I've worked together with my team to produce an online resource that's open to everyone to use. My hope is to reignite other people's passion for clocks, watches, and their makers. I hope you find something that excites your interest too.